Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Well, we have some special guests today. The only thing, in my opinion, worth getting at the entire Hamburg sh show. There is not a lot of cool venomous uh, that I would keep. Uh, interesting stuff for other people, but I'm sort of a connoisseur now. This is uh, something I've been trying to get for a while. These are newborn Echis oscillatus. West African uh, saw scales. Uh, these guys kill and maim a lot of people. The saw scales are perhaps the species that kills the most people on the planet, even if you add up all the snake bites by all the other snakes on the planet, these guys cause the most death. So why not have a bunch? Um, these get very pretty, and of course they're saw scales, and uh, although these guys are not uh, necessarily uh, into saw scaling, they're into fleeing because they're, they're easy prey at that size. Um, I don't normally put a whole bunch of animals and babies together, but these guys at this size and age will probably not eat one another. So scales are somewhat uh, cannibalistic. Uh, these guys have horrifically hemorrhagic venom because uh, their venom uh, breaks down fibrinogen, uh, which is an important substance in your blood that helps the clotting uh, cascade uh, take place and it causes your platelets to clump. Um, it's a pretty painful and pretty uh, a pretty bad bite. So we're gonna get these guys relaxing in their new uh, uh, bin here and then later today I will try to get some food into them. Uh, sure exactly what I'm going to do, but I can guarantee you that it will require force feeding. Um, normally these guys eat crickets, but the guy I got these from said that he couldn't get them to eat the crickets, but who knows? Uh, I might be able to, I might not be able to, but uh, I'll give it a try because that's the simplest thing to do. Hello. What are you doing? I don't even know if they had their first shed yet. Hello. Here you go. Now, saw scales are very gregarious snakes, so I find that they really do much better if you keep them, as long as they're not eating one another, uh, in the same bin until they get feeding and a little larger, and then you can uh, uh, dull them out. Uh, and put them in their own individual bins. Um, as you can see, these are these are sort of thread-like. Um, uh, hopefully, I can do this without any anything. That's my pinky, so you can see that they're quite tiny. Uh, so this, they will either get cannula fed. Uh, a little bit uh, until we can get them hydrated and get a little bit of food into them and then we'll start uh, offering them a variety of different things. Um, you know the Socherukii and the Pyramidum they all started on crickets uh, it was pretty straightforward. Um, from crickets some of them went to mice directly sent to pinks Others had to have an intermediate gecko stage where they ate geckos or gecko parts. Uh, when I say gecko parts, usually 
uh, it's just the tail because um, it's a nice snake-like package easy for them to, uh, to eat um, so uh, that's what we usually do then to hold geckos these guys have been a little traumatized bounced around for the past several hours so they really sort of need uh, a little bit of downtime. You know, quite contrary to popular belief, uh, saw scales do drink, and they will absolutely hate what I'm going to do next. But I think uh, I should provide a little bit of moisture that they can uh, drink if they so desire. Hi there. How you doing? What are you doing? I know you're all upset. I can see that. Okay, guys, let's uh, put you in here where you can warm up and it's nice and quiet and dark. Uh, get a label on that. Push this up so the little blighters don't escape. Um, and we'll move on. Okay, as the, the fellow t told me, uh, these Echis Oscillatus are not eating crickets. As you can see, there's plenty of crickets in there. Um, so, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to force feed them, which is very tricky because these are very tiny snakes, and pack a punch. And you know, I'm only going to probably insert the catheter to four centimeters because there isn't a whole lot of centimeters beyond that. Um, but we got to get some fluid and some uh, nutrients in the system uh, for them to work with because if they're if they're really not up to it, they're uh, not going to eat. Um, so, as usual. Oh my gosh, they're so tiny. Okay, that's between my thumbs. That's a very tiny but very dangerous snake. Um, I hate to abuse them so early on in their lives, but it's going to be a very short life if I don't give some food into them. And this is a good start because oh death roll because it's got plenty of fluid in it and uh, we can uh, get some nutrients and fluids question is oh that can go in further huh? okay it's a five so what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna put in two-tenths of a cc and hopefully that will not uh, cause too much regurgitation I know I'm sorry <clears throat> hello you know they're not really acting like real saw scale, saw scaling and striking and they're just interested in getting away at this point but I'm still not going to stick my finger in their mouth just to see how they react to that so, it's very nice that these are graduated so we'll start them on this and see how they make out. Yeah, oh, he's not happy. <laughs> no, well, I can understand that, but, um, you know, it's either that or perish. Um, so, if they're a little upset at me, uh, but they're alive, that's probably good. Oh, there's one little tiny head. They are feisty grab a hold of. Well, this is good. We want them feisty. Mm -hmm. They're fairly cool, actually. Oh, yes, I know. 
one would think that it would be back by the heater. Come on. I know this is unpleasant. It's unpleasant for me. Oh, you even got a little poopy on him. Oh, good. So five, four, okay, so that's three. And the last one. These are really truly just the size of a, you know, average worm. Yep. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, their, their typical saw scale habit of scrunching up really makes it tough to grab them. Oh, watch that finger. Come on. Come on. Decided that you were going to clamp down and you know, open your mouth. Okay, so to point one, and we're done. Sorry, dude. Now we'll put them back in the hot spot and. Uh, they will uh, they will not regurge and they will uh, keep that down and uh, digest it and fill out a little bit. Just back on. Big label for small snakes. <laughs> okay. Well, the mother of all death adders, the smooth death adder. She's produced lots and lots of babies, and as you can see, she just uh, uh, shut out. And we disturbed her by coming in the room to do some other tasks. And broke her, the last bit of her shedding, well, I may not have to tube her after a while, because if she brings the back end to me, Why you're going to see me drop this tail like a hot potato because she is the largest death adder that I've ever seen and many other people have ever seen. Come on, girly, just relax. I know. At least it's not Mrs. Viper Keeper with your tail, so you have a good chance of retaining it. Come on, just a little bit more. Happy. What happens is, if they retain scales on their tail, and this is more of a problem with young snakes because they grow so rapidly that they actually make a constriction bandage with their tail. I know, I know, I'm sorry. Uh, and this actually compresses uh, uh, blood flow and the limb does not, the limb, <laughs> okay, these are snakes, they have no limbs, duh, <laughs> um, but in a human the limb would become necrotic and they'd have to amputate and the same thing happens in snakes but it's their tail. 
it becomes necrotic and it falls off. Um, a lot of times it's, you know, it's just like, whoops, lost some tail, uh, but uh, I don't like to see it happen if I can uh, uh, prevent it. Since she's full grown, she will not get any, any more length, uh, hopefully no more girth. I mean, her scales are, are fitting together nicely, so, but she's still a big snake and she gets so upset when I, I give her real small meals. Uh, um, so, uh, fortunately I didn't have to remove her, just annoy the crap out of her by grabbing her tail. Uh, the alternative would have been take her out and put her head in the tube. Uh, because that's a snake that will kill you very, very rapidly. Uh, has a huge amount of venom in that big head of hers. Uh, and she's generally a sweetheart, so we'll have to give her an extra nice mouse uh, uh, when it's her turn to feed. Well, the male was just put back in with the female and true to form. He is now being very frisky and as usual she wants absolutely nothing to do with him. But he's nothing if not persistent. And we're hoping that uh, eventually in the proper season, this is not uh, the proper season for them, that we'll have some adorable little death noodles. Well, they were, uh, they were together in the proper season. Uh, I think she may be too old and just sort of worn out. Uh, her last litter was 32 babies. Oh my. With that particular dad. Um, and I gave her a year off and then I put them back together. They didn't breed that year. Uh, not that he didn't try. Uh, and I put them in again this year and I don't think that She's cooperated uh, either. Uh, she just sort of puts up with his nonsense. Look at him go. <laughs> you can almost hear mom sighing. 